In this video, I'm going to review the 2022 changes to Medicare Part B premium, deductible, and all the different copays that we have now switched going into next year. Here's your Reader's Digest version, higher. Every year around this time, the CMS re de releases the new premiums for Medicare Part B, as well as the Part B deductible and all of the copays involved in Part A and B. That stuff has now been released. It's up here on the screen, as you can see. So this is the actual press release from the CMS, which is Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. We'll cut right to it, which is the standard monthly premium from Part B will be $170.1 from 2022, an increase of $21.60 a month. Now, this is not actually that big a surprise to me. I know that the headlines on CNBC.com, blah, 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 are all saying, well, this is a shocking thing. Yeah, it's kind of shocking because its optics aren't great. But that said, it's actually two increases. One increase which should have gone into effect last year. Meaning, as a result of the American Rescue Plan, which also padded Biden care, if you will, they also suppressed the scheduled increase of Part B premiums, which should have been up to $160. So you've gone from $160 to $170 from 2021 to 2022. Now, the fact of the matter is, does this really matter to you? No, that's not how the way the world works. It looks at stuff, right? Which is everyone's just looking at the sticker prices and seeing $20. Well, that's actually two years worth of 10 and 10, basically. The deductible here, the Part B deductible for Part B is the annual deductible for all Medicare is $233, which is $30 higher, Fifth, about 15% again. This one is a little bit surprising because it has been kept low for quite a while. Okay, then some jibber jabber here from the government trying to justify the increases, etc., etc. <clears throat> and then, yes, here's... Right. This is the actual stuff that I was talking about in the past about the fact of the American Rescue Plan Act. I'm not sure what about this here regarding the Alzheimer's drug. That looks like fluff. Okay. If you require help in paying for Part B premiums, Medicaid is a possible path. There are many complicated levels, which is all governed by your state. In addition to that, if you require financial assistance for prescription drug benefits, Part D, there's a separate program called Extra Help. You do not need to be accepted into Medicaid in order to get extra help. They are not technically the same thing. So is it possible that you can qualify for extra help and not qualify for Medicaid? The answer is yes. Be sure to listen to all the different little snippets. I believe that there's an actually even a video about Medicare and Medicaid, how they work together, and the fact that my own view for persons that are in Medicare and Medicaid, both, there are special extra plans with extra benefits that people can take advantage of, which are very, very important dental, vision, transportation, above and beyond what Medicare and Medicaid by themselves would provide. Let's go back here. This is the website for the book, Maximize Your Medicare Pre-Order. The new edition is available for pre-order now. I do expect January to be the release date. Let's just go to Medicare Info. You can see it here. I've summarized all the changes to the co-pays, et cetera, et cetera. Don't forget about these resources. There are lots of good resources here at the top of this page. Not only enrollment matters, but also some of the forms that may need to be filled out. 
let's go here. So part A, the part A deductible for inpatient hospitalization has increased to 1556. You can see once you've met the deductible, you pay zero for the first 60 days. These increases here for persons who are in the hospital with part A alone, those are the copays per day. Skilled nursing facility, first 20 days is zero still. However, this portion here has increased, meaning from day 21 to day 100, now $194.50 a day is your amount that you are, you are responsible for first. Down here are the two new IRMA tables here. And now you can see some pretty interesting things for financial planning purposes. So first of all, you can see here that these rates now have started to increase notably. Something I've said over the past years. It's not only that the premiums would be higher, but the rate increases here on this schedule will also increase. And now we see it here, right here. That's observation number one. Observation number two is you can see these tiers right here for persons from 104, from 91,000, okay, to 143,000 pretty tight. And what I mean by pretty tight is that when I have released a number of videos and I've been on the media with financial planning type sites, talking about something called the silo effect, talking about investment strategy errors, talking about redemption error, you know, other financial planning maneuvers that seem fancy and seem efficient, but with this ripple effect, which is, yes, I took my Roth conversion. And I'm not saying it's wrong, right? A Roth conversion, for example, something that got you into this next tier would increase your premium by $1,000, more than $1,200 a year for Medicare Part B. Now, it's up to you to decide whether or not that's a good idea or not. That, all I'm saying here is to think of Roth conversion by itself in isolation no longer works. The same thing for your RMD strategy, the same thing for your, in, even down to the line item and which individual securities or holdings you have in qualified versus non-qualified accounts, meaning your retirement accounts versus your post-tax accounts. That entire ripple effect is, can be seen here. And yeah, I've known it's always existed. I know it's been glossed over, but when you have an increase of 15% of Medicare premium itself, and then Irma, which is a percentage on top of that, now maybe it's gonna get your attention. 